So Sony has finally hit a new low where they fumbled so hard in box office with Madam Web that they decided to re-release every Spider-Man titled movie in theaters and are covering that up with it being a 100 years of Columbia celebration. Now with that being said, that was not going to stop me from reliving my childhood experience in theaters. So I said, you know what, fuck it and gave in, bought tickets to see Spider-Man 1 from Sam Raimi in 2002. Now for those who don't know, I was born a year before this movie came out so I never really got to see it in theaters that I can remember anyway but I always was a Spider-Man kid I always had this bitch on DVD when it came out but yeah anyway let's get into the review of Spider-Man 1 starring Tobey Maguire uh there may be some footage in the background of 2 and 3 because I didn't feel like editing that footage out of my b-roll so yeah but if I want to bring up like a relevant scene I'll show that when appropriate and this is not going to be like an organized review I'm going to be bouncing back and forth from random shit nonetheless though first thing I have to say is holy fuck the opening credits and the score gave me a ridiculous nostalgia dopamine hit right to the brain. These are the only credits that my impatient ADHD ass doesn't mind sitting through with the webs everywhere and like the transitions between them. Shit goes hard. I'm saying this after I edited the video, almost forgot to mention, but can we please bring back Spider-Man narrating himself? Mary Jane Watson, the woman I've loved since before I even liked girls. That was literally goaded, but it needs to be more throughout the film. It's cool at the beginning and the end, but Spider-Man is literally known to narrate himself. Like, we need that shit. That shit is fire. To see, like, exactly, like, what he's thinking and his thought process throughout spider man and shit. Second thing I have to say about this movie is the pacing is still really good. Within the first 20 minutes of the movie, we are already introduced to pretty much the entire cast, except for the Daily Bugle and Jameson, which doesn't appear, I believe, up until, like, an hour in in the film which we're definitely gonna get to that but for now the first 20 minutes we get the protagonist peter parker set up he's been madly in love with mj since a kid their neighbors pete obviously you know he's a wallflower nerd who constantly gets bullied even while doing something as harmless as his hobby photography for the school paper but it's all good because pete has harry his best friend that sticks up for him while although at the same time he starts flirting with the girl peter is madly in love with which is pretty crazy i can't lie that's some option this is the most advanced electron microscope on the eastern seaboard. Some spiders change colors to blend into their environment. It's a defense mechanism. Peter! Makes you think I would want to know. Spiders can change their color to blend into their environment. Really? Yeah, it's a defense mechanism. Huh? Do you know that this is the largest electron microscope on the eastern seaboard? You what?! Bro code apparently does not exist in this universe. Oh yeah, we also get introduced to Norman, of course, before this field trip happens. I'm something of a scientist myself. Where Harry feels embarrassed to pull up in a Rolls, which, I mean, at least he's self-aware. He, he tries to be humble, so points for that. Of course, we all know the rest. Pete is taking MJ's picture. For the school paper? <gasps> oh boy, yeah. Perfect. And he gets bit by the spider. I gotta say, I like the little details of like Peter walking off the screen and then it zooms into the screen behind him with the new spider species and it having all the abilities listed and shit like that. Skip a little further ahead, of course, we get to see the beautiful relationship of Aunt May and Uncle Ben, but my favorite scene is Peter passing out, which may sound weird at first, but I, I'm gonna say I like the scene because of all the effects in it showing like Pete's DNA changing because of the spider bite. That shit is so smooth. Of course, afterwards, we get the scene of Norman taking the goblin serum I have these loose and then killing Dr. Strom, and that has all happened in the first 20 minutes. Main characters set up origins for the most part. Other than Peter, his origin's like halfway completed. Change? Yeah. Big change. You want to know what's actually crazy though? Is like Peter got Riz, but like he just tends to fumble so fucking hard. Like, all right, let's take a look. For example, this cafeteria scene. You see Pete eating, MJ walks by, pretty normal shit, but holy fuck, wait a minute. Do you guys see this? That fucking lunch looks way better than whatever the fuck prison meatloaf sludge shit they were giving me. Anyway, again, Pete eating, MJ walking by, pretty normal, but oh, some fucking retard spilled their orange juice and didn't clean it up, but you know, Pete has this new spider sense and feels this happening. So what does he do? He pulls the smoothest save of not only the woman he's in love with from falling on her ass and getting orange juice all over her fit, but as well, her lunch 
perfectly without spilling any of it. He then proceeds. Hey, you have blue eyes. I, I didn't notice without your glasses. Did you just get contacts? <laughs> to freeze up which i mean like let's be fair that's so real because women are scary but what's funny is everyone in my theater was dying at this then i don't know how the fuck no one noticed this but then again he's a nerd so he's kind of invisible until some crazy shit happens which happens when he flings food at flash causing this crazy fight and this th this is great cinematography the spider sense being shown it's sensing everything around pete the fly the fire alarm that kid spitting a thing out of a straw it's perfect the sound effect of Flash's fist sound insane as well. This film has great sound design. But yeah, the fight happens and it's funny because Harry's like, wow, like that was amazing, Pete, while everyone else is like, Jesus, Parker, you are a freak. But literally, Flash deserved that shit, so good shit for Pete W. The next scene is so great because in my theater, everyone was quoting him and everyone seemed to be okay with it. Everyone was laughing and quietly saying, go web, fly, up, up and away, web. Shazam! Go! Go! Go, Web, go! Shit was like a fucking choir. I wouldn't be surprised if anybody was actually like doing the fucking hand movements while saying it too. So that was a great experience, even though like, you know, we all seen this movie before. It's great to see it in theaters and like have this experience with other people type shit. Although I will say, oh my God, the only theater that the movie was showing in near me, the seats were so ass. It was so hot and claustrophobic in there. I was feeling like my left nutsack in the middle of summer. Anyway, sometime later, we get this great scene of Pete talking to mj after hearing mj's abusive father argue with uh their mom slash his girlfriend i believe and they start talking about what they plan to do after high school and shit essentially pete is gassing up mj to go and be an actor she's always been great at the school plays he's attended and like you can just tell this bitch is already wet for him but she does currently have a boyfriend which is douchebag flash i just realized pete beat up her man and is slowly buttering her up for when it's his turn it's an evil world we live in but flash i think pulls up in the new web i think that's flash straight out the dealership so she got a dip but pete's like damn i need a car to get the garden tools you feel me so he irresponsibly decides to use his powers to gain money and fame for women which i mean like who can blame him he's about to graduate high school he's 18 from 18 to early 20s all guys do is produce this white sticky substance he had all over his room when ma was like what's going on in there i'm exercising I'm not dressed, Aunt May. But I do want to say this costume design scene is dope. We see his thought process and like he does this fire ass drawing of Spider-Man. Shit's dope. Ah, but now we get to the infamous last conversation Pete has with Uncle Ben. Man, this is a great scene. It's like, damn, like I feel where Pete's coming from. He's a teen adult, 18, I think, right? Because he's about to graduate. But he's at a point where it's like, I love my caretakers, but like, goddamn, like, can I just do me type shit? Get the fuck off my back. But Uncle Ben is set up so well. Even though he has very little screen time, in that very little screen time, he's set up to be a very hardworking man that provides for his family and unconditionally loves Aunt May and Peter. He treats Peter like a son, and even though Peter does say this, And I know I'm not your father. Then stop pretending to be. He didn't mean it, and it was an in-the-moment thing, but you can see how hurt Ben was by that reply from Peter, and I cannot lie to you guys, I cried when Uncle Ben looked down all sad and shit from Pete saying that, but I also empathize with Pete, because like I understand exactly how he feels. This makes Uncle Ben's death scene in a few minutes all the more emotional, which I did cry at again. The emotions this movie took me through was a complete roller coaster. We go from kind of emotional scenes of Pete's last convo with Ben, then to this bonehead bone saw where we get classic memes like that's a cute outfit did your husband give it to you we go from that to pete getting fucked over from the wrestling match promoter i guess or whatever which honestly i would have did the same shit pete because i'm petty but karma can be a bitch and this is where pete learns his lesson because he goes to look for uncle ben only to find him dying on the floor i can't lie i cried here too man shit was sad rip uncle ben but now pete is out for revenge which he quickly learns is not necessarily the answer but at least the guy who did it was stopped for now anyway until you know we get to spider-man 3 again the wrestling match was a great scene another part of the movie where people in the theater said the quotes out loud and we were just having like a grand old time another time i cried is when peter got home and aunt may hugged pete and started crying i could not help but cry myself when she did she was so sad man a little bit later pete graduates but then we get one of the hardest transitions ever made in superhero film history in my humble opinion with great power 
power comes great responsibility. Remember that, Pete. Remember that. Yeah, finally, an hour into the movie, we see Spider-Man in costume. Some people complained about this, like, generally online over the years, I think. But, I mean, it is an origin movie. They had a lot of setup to do, and they did pretty good, so, I don't know, I'm not too upset about it. Then we finally get a huge highlight of the movie. J. Jonah Jameson, played by none other than the man, the myth, the legend, J.K. Simmons. His presence on screen is amazing because he, he has main character syndrome. It's kind of a part of his character, but he also just has this, like aura when on screen i mean like he's the boss and all but the best part is he's always so serious but so unserious at the same time if we can get a picture of julia roberts in a thong we can certainly get a picture of this weirdo put an ad on the front page cash money for a picture of spider-man he doesn't want to be famous and i'll make him infamous moving on though we get another great written scene between pete and mj where she's walking out of her job which is waiting tables and shit and she kind of obviously is like you know embarrassed about it because she didn't expect to see peter but i mean like it's not a big deal you know you got a job you're, you just got out of high school you're pursuing your dream in the meantime outside of the job she's like heading to an audition and this is where pete gets another chance to kind of be there for her butter her up so he's like hey it's okay at least you're doing auditions for acting and shit but he does end up finding out Harry is dating her and didn't tell Pete, which is hella grimy. The action in this movie is pretty great. We get to the Unity Festival where Oscorp is planning to announce selling the company or whatever, I think, and they plan to fire Norman, but this is where he's like, oh, hell nah, I'm gonna kill every single one of you board member cunts and cause a fucking scene. But Spider-Man is here and he's for some reason doing the Superman thing, but nonetheless, cool scene. The CGI is a little outdated by now. I mean, it's been 20 years. But I mean, for the most part, it holds up like this scene later in the movie where he's saving someone from a burning building. That web doesn't really look real at all. Speaking of CGI, let's actually go over the costumes. Spider-Man's costume is pretty dope. I got to keep it 100 with y'all though. I never liked the Raimi lenses. Why the fuck are they triangle shaped? What happened to the regular fucking looking ones? The, the more circular ones, I guess you could say. Honestly, other than that, the costume is cool. Although it is pretty Hollywood. Like, I don't know if I could ever see Spider-Man IRL making this but it's a cool costume though as for green goblin i don't know man i mean it's not the worst costume design ever but it could have been better my main problem with it is i kind of just wish it had a little more purple i mean like his glider is purple so that's cool but another weird maybe not so noticeable issue i have with this costume is the mouthpiece because from a distance like it, it might be fine you can't really tell but when you're up close you can see behind like the metal teeth there's a mesh grill thing or whatever it's see-through and you can see when norman's talking and I kind of wish like you couldn't see that because <laughs> I don't know about y'all but it's kind of fucking awkward there's like one maybe two scenes in the movie where like he's talking and like you can see his mouth not moving Impressive. But overall, I kind of do wish it was a little more comic accurate, but it's not the biggest deal in the world. Like, the costume's all right. Back to more VFX fuck-ups. Also, please keep in mind, I'm not pointing these out on some hating shit. It's more funny than anything, but in this scene, after Pete saves MJ, he's swinging with her, and you can see they are swinging towards the right-hand side, but her hair is blowing towards the right-hand side when it's really supposed to be blowing to the left-hand side. But nonetheless... Well... He's taking the subway. So let's actually talk about Norman. We haven't really talked about him too much yet. I do want to say it's pretty crazy that he has a grenade that can fucking vaporize you. But this scene is actually really great showing like the duality of Norman versus the Green Goblin persona on some like split personality disorder type shit. This mirror scene is mad dope because it's like Norman actually has zero clue that he's a murderer supervillain until his Green Goblin persona just reveals it to himself. After that, we get another great series of scenes where Goblin goes to the bugle to look for spider-man ends up giving him knockout gas and they have a little chat now this conversation is actually like probably top five scenes in the movie in my opinion because obviously gobby has the upper hand but he's giving spider-man a chance to join him i could squash you like a bug right now but i'm offering you a choice join me imagine what we could accomplish together what we could create or we could destroy cause the deaths of countless innocents and selfish battle again and again and again until we're both dead is that 
what you want. Think about it, hero! At the same time though, he's also just being a realist with Spider-Man when he tells him, In spite of everything you've done for them, eventually they will hate you. Why bother? And honestly, like, can we talk about how real Gabi was for when he said, would you rather create and accomplish together or destroy and kill innocents in the process of battling each other until we're both dead? Pretty much exactly like Batman and Joker, how they do the same shit. And it's nice how right after this conversation, Peter sees exactly what Gabi is talking about when he reads the paper the next day saying citizens want Spider-Man arrested at the same time while Norman's dialogue is uh, like playing in the background saying eventually they'll hate you after everything you've done for them. But we're gonna revisit this later next we get the infamous upside down kiss scene now i gotta say this is pretty crazy that mj is cheating on harry but i mean it's spider-man but like y'all real quick imagine your girl cheated on you for drake like damn bro you compared to drake that's like no competition gang so like i kind of get it but like the morals just aren't there like this is not the right girl but hey that, that's just me i believe it was also said at one point by toby Maguire that this was the worst scene he's ever done because he's upside down he has water going in his nose and he can't breathe because he's kissing a girl oh yeah by the way did y'all forget this was a thanksgiving movie because yeah we got this thanksgiving dinner scene i did not forget hold on we need to pause for a minute in the middle of me editing this video i found a random ass plot inconsistency unless there's like a time card i missed in this movie but i don't think i did but okay so this is a thanksgiving dinner scene right right okay stay with me when is thanksgiving november okay right right so now semi unrelated question when does the school year typically usually end june july somewhere around there right right okay i just realized peter graduated high school in june presumably 35 minutes before this thanksgiving dinner scene now i know like like you know it's a movie and all that shit but the thing is like what gives is there like a five month random ass time gap in between the graduation and the thanksgiving scene i don't know if anyone has ever realized this or pointed it out but if so let me know in the comments but back to this thanksgiving scene which is funny because this is where all hell breaks loose because just before this goblin set up a burning building to get spider-man's attention to see you know what's up with spider-man's decision on that generous proposal of course though spider-man said fuck you gobby and they fought a bit but notably peter got cut by whatever the fuck these things are i don't know what they're called if anybody knows comment that down below because it's not a regular grenade it's a spinning flying blade thing but eventually at this thanksgiving dinner norman notices and realizes holy shit pete is spider-man because how the fuck else did he get that exact cut i just gave spider-man not even half an hour ago and i like that part of the scene where like he realizes it kind of reminds me of uh what happened in homecoming with vulture although this film did it first i guess so very abruptly norman leaves but harry's like where are you going my girlfriend's here and norman in his big fucking mouth holy shit says some wild ass shit which you know obviously pisses mj off which then in turn pisses off harry and it, it, it's just a huge mess dinner's ruined cancel the holiday after this is where again all hell breaks loose now spider-man's greatest enemy knows who he is and purposefully puts what are we thinking the first or second person he cares about the most in the hospital do we think pete cares about mj or aunt may more probably may i mean he did leave may in the hospital but eh, she was safe there for now considering holy shit goblin has mj on a fucking bridge god damn starting to look like what happened on 3 13 73 if you know you know but real quick before we get to that holy fuck karma is a bitch harry you know damn well that was pete's bitch you know damn well you was wrong for dating her behind pete's back you can't even be mad pete's been buttering that ass up the entire movie and you didn't even know it holy but of course harry goes to tell norman which causes norman to want to rectify certain inequities which is crazy because why did it take harry being heartbroken over a bitch to finally be a decent dad to him but anyway finally we're at the final battle there is so much good shit in this final 20 minutes of the movie but this video is probably already too long so we're gonna try to blow over this quickly pause no diddy this scene is fucking awesome because i don't think after this we even see spider-man do a slingshot other than like tasm one i think i like how very blunt the writing is in this scene because norman is like yeah you fucked up being a hero because now me a lunatic has a fucked up choice where you either need to save a bunch of kids or the woman you fucking love but of course spider-man is spider-man he's gonna clutch it and do both he has to it's his responsibility because he's capable of doing it so it's not going to be easy but it's got to get done i was going to say it's kind of selfish that he went for mj first but then i realized holy shit that was actually really smart and the best possible play because if he had went for the kids first he very like 99 chance would have had to shoot a web at mj to try to stop 
her from falling and we all know what happened with Gwen so I mean yeah I guess it wasn't that selfish it was actually pretty smart I already said it but goddamn this movie gave me a roller coaster of emotions even though I already seen it multiple times this is the best part of the final battle or like final like part of the movie fuck the action sequences because after the city called for spider-man's arrest they come here at the bridge to help him by throwing shit at goblin to throw him off balance from stabbing spider-man with his glider and it's just beautiful because the city of new york is working together to help their beloved hero after they tried to get him arrested they actually appreciate him so gobby was kind of right but kind of wrong in the end one of those guys is like you mess with one of us you mess with all of us that shit made me tear up a bit and of course you know we get a little funny part in there where the black guy is like oh yeah i got some for you, ass. you, miss you miss new york. can we please bring back new york having a character arc in spider-man films okay i mean i guess we just had that in uh fucking far from home to no way home but still though but now to the part where gobby just gives spider-man nothing but misery 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 and i mean like we kind of can't even blame gobby for this because he spider-man friendship and you spat in my face i really like how powerful they made gobby's punches and kicks and everything feel you'd be surprised what you can do with sound effects good camera angles and a little slow-mo sprinkled in between it makes for an awesome action sequence to be honest though the craziest part of this final fight is when gobby is like had you not been so selfish your little girlfriend's death would have been quick and painless but now that you've really pissed me off i'm gonna finish her nice and slow wait gobby you're gonna what pause mj and i we're gonna have a hell of a time See now, Gabi. Let, 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 let me just stop you right there because this this is where you fucked up. Now you just gave Spider-Man the strength he needed to whoop your ass. You shouldn't have brought her up. You talking like you about to fucking go crazy in the bed with her? You shouldn't have brought her into a gang because now Pete's on your ass. He dropped a whole goddamn wall on your shit. On some real shit though, it's crazy how much he's able to take from Spider-Man. I mean, obviously they are both like superhuman and enhanced and shit though. But damn, Spider-Man, it's whooping his ass. Also. I had to note down the crazy gaslighting from Gobby. He's all like, oh yeah, I would never hurt you, Pete. Whole time he tried to kill Aunt May, tried to kill MJ, and he's on the low, sneakily attempting to kill Spider-Man with his glider flying behind him. But he fucked up because as we all know, I do have to say though, it's great that we get the dialogue of Norman saying, I've been like a father to you, be a son to me. And Pete just replies with the hardest line in the entire movie as the score in the background comes in. I have a father. His name was Ben Parker. That clip, that segment of Peter saying that could go into one of those edits. Y'all ever see them hard ass edits? Yeah, that line could go in one of those edits. That might actually exist. If I can find one, I'll throw it in here somewhere. One thing I really never understood was why Pete didn't tell Harry. I mean, obviously we got the dying man's wish for Pete to not tell Harry, but not telling Harry is what causes Spider-Man 3 to happen. So I don't know. I mean, I guess. And just when you think Pete is going to get a somewhat happy ending, he completely fumbles by being like, oh, nah, MJ, my fault, G. All I got to offer is friendship. After the woman you've loved for years, since a kid just told you she's in love with you, kissed you, but then again, I get it because no matter what I do, no matter how hard I try, the ones I love will always be the ones who pay. And I mean, that's what Spider-Man's all about. When Spider-Man wins, Peter Parker loses. Man, this movie is so classic. And as soon as the end credits came up, everybody in my theater started clapping. I clapped too. It was such a great time. This movie is just amazing, spectacular, grand, every other great adjective I can't currently think of film so with that i'm giving sam raimi spider-man 1 a 9 out of 10 it's pretty much a perfect superhero origin story for spider-man i kind of wish goblin didn't die but it's not the biggest deal ever knowing no way home happened and i do wish the costume designs were slightly different some of the character writing is spotty as far as like harry and mj's morals go but overall it's a great movie so that's why you know i i'd say personally 9 out of 10 what do you guys rate sam raimi spider-man 1 out of 10 and what are your thoughts on not only the movie but as well my thoughts 
thoughts. Do you agree or disagree? With that being said, I want to hear your opinion. So make sure to comment down below so I can interact with you in the comments. Thank you for taking time out of your day to click on this video. If you're new to the channel, I try my best to cover confirmations, rumors, and leaks regarding Spider-Man media and whatever else I'm interested in. You know, for the next few weeks, we're going to be reviewing the, the Spider-Man movies. They're releasing in theaters back to back weeks. So, you know, be on the lookout for that. So if that's what you're interested in, hit the subscribe button. We're on the road to 6K. Don't forget to leave a like if you enjoyed this video and to check out my last upload at the top left. Hope you have had a good day and that you enjoyed the video. Until next time.